Alright guys, now we are going to talk about the Linksy Files Season 2. I'm going to start off with a summary, so if you don't want anything ruined, you might want to click off and watch all 10 episodes of Season 2 now. And I do apologize that this is a little late, but it's better late than never. So, let's get started. Basic long summary is the Dark Fortress has a new mistress named Delilah after the fusion cannon event. Delilah fused from both Demon and Linksy with Demon's wicked ways and Linksy's badass personality. Now in charge of the Dark Fortress, she tosses Dark Lord's throne out of her lair and places her chair on top, giving all the pleasure she thinks she is worth. Meanwhile, Ace is confused and worried what Dark Lord has done with the fusion cannon. He has no idea that the Dark Lord is no longer a threat and a new mistress is taking over. Delilah then decides to plan a large machine that she creates her first monster. Instead of using Demon's mind control cards where he captured the warriors of Kandaya, she uses her own new powers to alter her own soldiers into new soulless monsters to fight for her, all themed of cat-like creatures. Feralorn is the first of Delilah's monsters, is set to distract Ace where she builds his big machine, and Footlin are, is hyped up, ready to see what she's planning. Then we are introduced to the new side villain, Shazire. And I have to say, I really do like this set of villains that she created. And I like the Shazire. Shazire, yeah, he doesn't do a whole lot. But I do really enjoy Shazire. He's the cat who works for Delilah. And this season works in reverse to season one. In season one, the side villains got more focused than the real villain. But season two, it's the other way around. Now, Shazire is just her advisor who he listens to his queen, and his own power is levitation. It will make more sinister, he does nothing unless the fight plays out, allowing to bring his queen what she wants. And I like Shazire and his plan. Yes, you can say he's in the background, but I really like his overall design, and I like his, 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 his character. It's not a lot, but he'll get more to do in Season 3. Now back to the plot. While Shazire goes to discover some Linksian property which will earn his favor, Furlong actually manages to successfully capture Ace and knocks him out unconscious right at Delilah's plant as ruined, which was nothing more than a rock concert. She takes out her frustration out her monster by blasting him through the chest and tosses the unconscious ace down the surface of Kandoya. Now this has to be addressed as this was the first time Ace has ever been beaten by the major villain. And it was done so easily and Delilah at the moment in time had no reason to capture Ace. If she did want him dead he would have been killed right there. Which shows how dangerous not just Delilah is, but how powerful her monsters are. The Footland are mind blown. After so many attempts to defeat Ace, they were shocked to see their mistress toss him aside like nothing. She then tosses the two soldiers who questioned her there to their deaths, and then explains her motives. She has no desire to fight Ace, as she doesn't view him as a threat in her mind. And due to her Linksian senses, she indicates she's way more powerful than him. And if he were close to her power, he'd be dead right then and there. Her only desire is to distract Ace, allowing her to get what she wants, which is clearly music and having as much as she can. And I think that's why, and also Lucas thinks why most people like her. Because she has all the power instead of focusing on the main plot of what a typical villain would do. She just has a blast with her life. Which is a pretty good thing for her considering the fact that she's going to die later on in season 3 or as the series goes on. But of course she doesn't know that yet. But as a viewer you know she's going to die. As she's still evil and the fact that she will die makes her defeat that much sadder to the viewers. 
and it was pretty sad for Lucas to kill her off, as he told me, as he had so much time riding her and he had no restrictions. The footman face up to Delilah as she threatens them not as soldiers, but as servants, as she fears they're pointless. Her monsters easily manage to capture Ace, so they don't need an army, but she uses them in another antagonizing way by slavery. This makes one of the monsters snap, and he questions his own path on why they don't rise up and get her. They're explained that they are too weak, and they fear to cross her path. Meanwhile, Shazai returns with Lin under mind control to, thanks to Demon's mind control technique, which he used to hypnotize the warriors on the previous season. Delilah being composed of both not just Lynxie's love for Lin, but also Demon, treating him nothing more than a sex object, and uses him as muscle. However, after discovering his name, Lin, she questions if she should release to get the answers as this to Lynxie and Demon, or keep him under mind control. Now, this subplot was dropped and then changed to focus on Panthor, which I have to say, for it is the better choice, Lucas. You did good. You do good with your writing on this this little YouTube cartoon series you're doing. The Footlin are brought for monster picking, and the Footlin who complain early keeps shouting at Delilah to trick her into giving more power. Of course, Delilah knows what he's up to. And just give him power anyway to show him up. This leads into the birth of Panthor. And Panthor is sent to distract Ace. Only he wants to kill Ace his way and not do it for her. But to prove how the job should be done. And then he plans to free his people from Delilah's control. Later, however, Delilah replaces him with Cheetor to make sure the job gets done her way and to keep Panthor from going astray. She makes a coliseum surrounding Ace, and while he fights Cheetor, she rips apart pieces of land which sounds like she's destroying the world piece by piece. Meanwhile, Cheetor, who you... Yes, I think he's an entertaining monster. He gives our hero... Ace quite some trouble by using the footlin to shapeship into various creatures for him to fight with aid of mysterious dog. And Ace manages to beat the skeleton soldiers of which the deceased body of Dark Lord's daughter if you got that easter egg. Yes, I did get that. The best part was Ace nearly dead from Cheetor, but Delilah's plan has already been accomplished. And with that, she had no further need to distract Ace and destroy her own monster. Which might sound dumb, but you have to remember, Ace isn't her focus. He's just meant to be distracted for a bit. Panthor is pissed that Delilah's plan is nothing more than adding a paddling pool to the Dark Fortress. And that one of his own siblings and his footling family died as nothing more than Tool. Meanwhile, Ace is trying to piece together what is going on, which allows us as viewers to see Ace's lair. He knows the Dark Lord is gone. The monsters he's faced are based on cats, and when the dog left, all he could find was some paws, prints, and piece of red material, which you do see. Delilah then wants a flower garden and creates a powerful monster solely for that purpose. While Panthor complains that she tells him that Lepara has needs to distract Ace as that what Panthor's job is. Panthor is pleased at this plan to destroy Ace before he can call back. Later, however, we get a interesting cameo from the late angry grandpa who recently passed away. May your rest in peace in grandpa. His cameo was awesome and he was complaining about cats which is funny since the villains are 100% cats and as Panthor has since Ace sent he then to be picked up by Angry Grandpa, which that was good comedy. As Panthor's fly Delilah admits that when the Footland become her monsters, the soul is replaced by nothing but a mindless monster.
making them have no connection to the footling. Panthor refuses to accept this because it would mean he is to now longer apart. He's no longer a part of the footling. Ace and Panthor face off only to have Ace gotten stronger than last time. His training was paying off as he had enough power to defeat Delilah's monsters, who at this time, he thinks Lynxie is despite Delilah very clearly using Demon's Aurora techniques to contact him. The fight is interrupted when Lepar is set to clear up the mess that Panthor couldn't. Panthor tries to convince Lepar to stop working for Delilah, but you know how this turns out. Eventually, Ace and Panthor team up to defeat Lepar, but when Lepar catches Ace in her vines, Ace convinces Panthor that he has to put his personal feelings aside in order for the greater good, which I really enjoy that. So he admits to Delilah's statement and destroys Lepar, which must have been hard for him. For any villain who has to put their personal feelings aside, yeah, it can be very tricky for them. With Lepar destroyed and Ace and Panther are now a team, and Panther shares some information that what he knows he says that Lynxie has changed and now likes to be called Delilah. And no one has ever questioned it, nor mentioned Lynxie or Demon as fear to cross her path. While Ace reveals that he has a computer system called Dr. X and company called ECA that makes his gadgets. Meanwhile, Delilah senses Panthor's betrayal and it doesn't even fear as she plans to get the CD and tricks her to Footland to get him for her as they think it's a special place holding the sacred disc. The Footland are defeating allowing Shazire to get the disc. She thanks Shazire for all his efforts as he uses his own flying ability to lift the islands to create the pull event in the previous episode. After Delilah is interrupted by Neurovision, she enters her chambers, which has a big line slash over Lynxie's name on her door. She meditates and enters her mind to confront the inner spirits to try to convince that she is not real, despite the fact that she has the power of a Lynxian and the knowledge of one. She has no idea about her birthday. Furious at this, Delilah goes insane, planning to prove these spirits that she is real by unlocking the Lynxian long-hidden tr truth power. She rallies her armies and treats them more like soldiers while not just sending a monster, but both her henchmen to retrieve the spell book. Ace and Panthor manage to destroy the Samara, who can mimic fighting moves in what is one of Panthor's greatest battles. However, that victory is short-lived when Delilah shows up personally to help get the spell board. Panthor is wounded, Ace is captured, and Delilah admits something secret to Panthor if he continues down this path. Panthor tries to fight Delilah, but he only manages to see Demon deep within. She then uses them as noble souls to get the book, and they refuse, so she knows Ace's weakest point that Panthor won't last much longer with that wound. And if you want to heal him, he needs the spell book. I mean, if you were in that situation, of course, you saved your friend's life, despite there being consequences. And he takes that chance. While Ace passes the trial, Delilah enters behind, allowing the doll to come back and free Panthor. He claims he was one of the warriors who Dark Lord imprisoned, and he figured out that the fusion cannon created Delilah and puts the plan into work. She admits this, admit she was lying about saving Panthor, so she takes the book only to discover that Panthor has escaped, and she now has a dog also witness her true power. Captured, they both watch in horror as the ritual begins. She admits the Lynxians killed nearly every human on the planet except for Ace and the remaining rebels. Meanwhile, Panthor gets the fusion cannon and still thinks about what Delilah told him. It then changes his mind after the dog had healed his wounds a bit. He was still willing to fight, but however, he arrives too late as Delilah entered power of form. Delilah mops the floor with all three, and in the process, she kills Shazire. She reveals that every Lynxian has special ability. Hers was levitation that she placed power within her minion as she had no need for it. As she assumed she was powerful enough back then. But the gloves are off now. 
this whole big fight is for the viewers who were disappointed that there was no big fight. So this epic battle is awesome enough to make the season end on a good note. And I like that it wasn't a big fight in season one. Season one was a setup. Season two, we just getting started. So in the fight, Delilah loses her spell book, discovers the rebels, unmasks Ace in front of them with her claws technique, using Demon's dark power known as Darkness Claws Attack. The fight is taken to the Dark Fortress on the court fields. Panthor causes the fortress to come crashing down while fighting Delilah. She murders the dog, clashes with both Ace and Delilah. Eventually, it has Panthor at mercy as he impels her claws as she plays the music goodbye to so soon to indicate it the end. Panthor, in his last moments, grabs the cannon and fires it. Diffusing Delilah as she begs for help, they couldn't reach her as the rubble was too thick due to how much destruction she had caused. She's left alone with nothing but her music and for once she wanted it turned off. As it did mark the end, the end of herself. She returned to Lingxi and the power left for her body, making the others assume Demon was free. Ace rushes to help his friend, but he explains this was going to happen as Delilah said, If you kill your creator, you'll die as well. So this was ba this is bound to happen anyway, and if he was going to go, he'd go fighting. Ace asks why didn't he tell him, and Panthor replies with, I had to put my personal feelings aside for the greater good. Lynn gets, out, gets Ace out of there now, free from mind control, as the Dark Fortress blows up. Lynn and Ace discuss to help Lindsay get her powers back. While also discovering Demon then come out something else dead, which is an entity which only wanted to find someone worthy. Ace roared in anger that he wouldn't allow Lindsay to be brought back to power after all that last thing she did was aid the Dark Lord into beating him. And he didn't expect her to change just like that. But however, a rebel helped them saw it out. Ace confesses to the rebels in a funny yet heartwarming scene. They're frightened when they learn Ace Senior was dead and Lingxi has the ring. Pressured by the people, he vows to destroy Lingxi and the remaining villains to reclaim the ring and restore his peace to Candoya. Ace finds Lingxi who appeared to be some mysterious pain it was a result of being lost of power we don't know but Ace had finally had his moment to kill Lingxi and retrieving the ring only for Lin and the rebels see Ace and stop him they assumed that he was trying to help Lingxi and not kill her but eventually the entity arrived beating up the group Ace tried to stop it from returning Lingxi's power but failed Lingxi faced the Antidity and deemed it worthy, so she gained knowledge of what happened to her people, how she ended up with Dark Lord. Now, speaking of the Dark Lord, Dark Lord was not only revealed to be the Revel, but also the dog that aided them on their quest. He was not dead, but he reformed and he apologized to Lingxi for not telling her the truth. And she admitted that they both done bad stuff they regret. And even though Lingxi couldn't remember what she did as Delilah, she felt it was best to go her own path now. So later in hell, DeMont wishes that there had been transported there ever since being free of Delilah. No longer having his spirit trapped, he was now in hell. And Demon encountered a servant who claim he made a servant sacrifice to gain more power, which was accidental when he fired the gun, and put his own body into Lingxi's. Now worthy of power, he was tossed into lava, and his body morphed into a form more powerful than Lingxi, a form that will ruin the future of the planet. I hope you guys got all of that. I know that was a long synopsis, but my friend Lucas he decided he wanted to 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 give every little detail detail because this is spoiler filled by the way. For season three, we I might 
ask him. We do, he might be able to shorten his synopsis in some way. I'm not sure yet. So it said the ending of season two clearly sets up the events well for season three, and. All I'm going to say is when season 3 gets released, it is on. It's going to be a lot more action. And these characters are going to have something big to deal with. They're going to have something big and vengeful to deal with. The big bad of, of them all. And like I said about the final fight. The final fight is really great. I didn't mind that there was a big fight for... The first season, because you saved the big fight for the big big season, and now something else I would like to mention is originally Delilah and Panther had the opposite color, black and white, and the shock that when Panther and Delilah fight, they look similar. It added more weight to prove it, proving how Panther broke from his shackles. But Lucas Green, he changed this for the better, and it worked good. I pretty much noticed too. And you feel bad for Ace this season more than you thought because Panther was the only real friend he ever had. Lindsay betrayed him, but Lynn was there much most of the time. And so you can really feel emotion when Panther dies. Yes. Panther dies. This season is great. This season, they did it once again. Lucas Green, once again. This guy, if this was a movie, this would be pretty amazing. All the characters are still really great. And the reason behind Delilah's tale is still pretty cool. The reason that Delilah's Liz's tale hasn't changed that much is very simple. Each Linksian has her own unique color and Delilah's is red. Lancey is purple, so when they change, you can tell which Lancey is which. And there's a lot of things that does need explaining, but all of it makes sense as this season goes along. You, there's a lot of great, fantastic, entertaining awesomeness there, and it's really good. Now, the power-up form is not her tr Delilah's true form. It's a form. It's a boost mode with increased power, and her true form is base. Her base form from the cat-like uniform you, you we seen before. Now, for people have said season two is Panther season than Ace, and yeah, it is more Panther season because you feel bad for Panther. Ace still does a really good job, and it's really nice. And Panther kind of feels more like the main character than Ace, but. Lucas hand, handles it pretty well. He does a really good job at the writing and the and the, and the drawings of it. And another thing, this series is meant for both boys and girls. Because, hence, why the main character is a female, so the girls can root for her, and she's also a cute cat, so that's also a plus. So I give Lucas Green a big tap on on the hat. It's pretty good, and. That also plays early on to Delilah's motifs as she gets music, as that's fun, allowing most girls, girls to root for a villain as well. While the boys have the villains and the action, so yes, 
he balances out quite well. And another thing you got to mention is the foot link can shapeshift, but they can't mimic Dark Lord's power completely. When they shapeshift, their color palette stays the same, so they keep black, red, and purple. Dark Lord is a shapeshifter, so flying is no problem for nor than the footland since they share the same shapeshifting ability. Ace uses tech to fly and fly, fight and fly. And some people say most characters don't use. Lucas told me that most characters doesn't use war energy to fly most of the time. They use it for attacks. So Demon has bat wings, so he doesn't need to fly. Because it helps him boost speed. Now I love the fact that they fly. He, People's been asking him how the characters can fly. Similar to Kai and Dragon Ball Z. The Lynxes developed a technique using their own soul energy. Which is referred to as Aurora. Then they shared this ability to other species on the planet. So I really do enjoy that. I think that was pretty good on the part. And I am I'm excited to s it pays off very well and the series is fun and I am enjoying myself and laugh. You can watch the series and laugh and not take it too seriously and still have fun with it. Or you can take it seriously and see what happens next. It's great. It's like a Saturday morning project brought onto his YouTube channel. And I am very hyped for season three, which is the long-awaited Demon Saga. This Demon Saga, this is gonna be the best. Season two is great. I have no problems with it, and there's a lot of cool references. And if there are monsters similar surrounding voices, and you get the references, and it pays off very well. And the footland are, are easy to animate, and since they have no actual form, just being molded with the combines of Dark Lord's shape-shifting, Demon's evil, and Lisey's fighting style, they are quite funny and intimidating. And as far as the monsters, Season 1 was okay, but Season 2 had every monster with unique voices. Some being references to past source material. And I think that was an incredible thing for him on Lucas's part. The, the Footland and Monsters were cool. And Lynn is just a minor character who's there for muscle and exposition. She is, he is Lynxie's love interest. But one, Link C likes to hide, and a second, the show knows this and it doesn't focus on it as we leave it up to the shippers and leave it up to interpretation. And we play it mostly, f he plays it mostly for laughs. Still, the reveal of Lynn surprises me. And the plan, I really still like. I still like the one plan for, for, for all these characters. And we have another added piece of comedy who I'm very, very happy he didn't overstay his welcome. It's like a Stan Lee cameo with Angry Grandpa. He was good comedy. And episode 8 and episode 10, he plans to kill Lynxy when she is weakened after her evil sins of the past and to reclaim the ring for the good of the future threats. I thought that was a great plan. He's doing this behind his team's back and did everything in his power to sh from stopping Lynxy from coming back. But as he knows, she still poses a threat. And, like, Panthor is very well fleshed out. Now, yeah, he's very fleshed out. When you first watch this, you probably thought he's going to be the main character. So. And. Like I said in season one. I love the backstory of. 
love the backstory of Ace. And like I say, he's trying to live to his to his far his father legacy, but he's put under a lot of pressure for not having the ring and he's trying to match it, but he knows he can't come close. He eventually tells his Panther that he has computer program called Dr. S and Company called Eco, who makes his gadgets. So in season three I would like to see how they develop how he gets his weapons created. I wanna see that. And he is a well-developed character, and he finds the ring near the end of the Delilah saga. In episode 10, he admits to the people what happened, which is a very funny scene and heartwarming scene, with one of the people being the late angry grandpa. And that cameo was great. Now, Panthor, like I said, like I said, Panthor is one of my favorite characters. Panthor's whole message is being taught to sacrifice others for himself by doing things for the greater good, which is what Ace taught him. And he did it without Ace telling this. He is one of the better developed side characters Lucas has ever created. And I do love, in episode 6 of this season, Delilah informs that if he keeps going down this path that he's going through, he knows what will happen, which she says, if you destroy your creator, then you will die too. And I have to give credit to Lucas Green for being such a genius. At first, you think he's a villain, but then in episode 6, he starts to come a little different. Now, and Delilah... Being a fusion of Demon and Linksy, since Linksy secretly loves Lin and Ace doesn't, we use we we use him to Delilah as nothing more than a sexual object, which is what Lucas told me. Panthor is amazing. Panthor is great. I loved him, and I love the sacrifice that he gives. So, at the end of the day. This series is going to get even better and better as it goes on. Even when it gets to its last part of the saga. Because, because I'm not sure how many seasons this guy, Lucas, is going to do. But also, I think what will work is that if, if you give your fans... Lucas a little behind the scenes of of each season and each episode. And then also for since you've done season one and season two already, Lucas, a little suggestion to you. I feel like you should do a video commentary on both seasons explaining explaining the challenges of making both seasons and the process of writing stuff. I think that I think that would be something your your audiences on YouTube would watch. But this is a very fun show. The Linksy series, the Delilah saga, aka season two, is my favorite. For now. At least until we get to season three. Season three is going to be awesome. So, I highly recommend watching this season. If you have not watched this season yet, what are you doing listening to this audio review? I told you there was going to be spoilers in this thing. Go watch it. Like, right now. <laughs> but overall, this... This... Is... And incredible. This is the they he do, he work he improves on a lot of things from season one, but also maintaining what the show is. And wow, Lucas, you did your, you outdid yourself this time. So 
for this, I'm this is going to get my extreme highest recommendation. This is going to get my JD Rainbow Silver approval. Is that good? So, is that good? I can't wait for season three. I think season three is going to be amazing. And I look forward to seeing where the story goes. Because there's always more to tell. So, let me know what you guys think about the Delilah Saga Season 2. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Have you seen it yet? So, And if you like this, you can come subscribe to the channel. And subscribe to Lucas's channel. Stay tuned for Season 3 coming very soon. And this is Future Filmmaker 39480 signing out. And until next time, you guys have yourself the viewing pleasure. Subscribe to the channel. Share these videos. Retweet these videos on your Twitter. Talk about them on Instagram. And I, a new hashtag is called Future Filmmaker 39480. Whenever you use the hashtag or tag me in something on a post, if it's a new video, I will see it. So, you guys, until next time, keep it cool, and I'll see you guys. Bye.